Let's talk about prototypes. JavaScript is a prototype-based language rather than class-based. I don't want to dive into a complete explanation of what that means because this isn't a computer science textbook. But what it comes down to is that all of the basic types you use in JavaScript come from an existing prototype, which are themselves usually objects or primitives, but that's also getting deeper than I want to go. Object, for example, or array. If you've worked with JS for any significant amount of time, you'll know that these types all have methods associated with them. For example, here are an array and an object. Now, we know we can use various methods on those variables, right? Like this. This is going to give us an array of uppercase names and then a boolean true. And there we go. So the question is, where are those methods coming from? We didn't define them after all. The answer is they're coming from the prototype from which all base types are built. When you create an object, for example, the JavaScript engine goes, hmm, OK, time to make an object. How do I do that? And then consults its list of prototypes. It finds the built-in object constructor and then builds a new object using the additional data you've provided. So you get your shiny new Nintendo Switch object with its three properties, portable, price, and graphics card. But you also get all of the methods that are built into the object prototype. Quick side note, strings are primitives, but the JS engine automatically wraps them in an object while performing certain actions, which is why you can do this. And get some output, 23 characters. But you can't do this. That's going to give us a big old undefined error. The string isn't an object. It's just temporarily being wrapped with one by the JS engine while it runs the dot length method. This prototype inheritance is immensely powerful. For one thing, it allows us to use the wide variety of built-in methods that come with objects, arrays, strings, and so forth. That's great, and obviously a core aspect of programming in JavaScript. But equally important, if not more so, is the fact that you can create your own constructor objects and gain the benefits of this prototypal inheritance. You do this using functions. Note that by tradition, constructors begin with a capital letter. Observe. Now let's do some console logging. Aha, I told you about capital letters and then promptly forgot to do it. There we go. As you can see, we're getting values from our constructor. Notice also, however, that we can see the give price method right here. That's because constructors don't actually assign prototype methods. So in this case, that method will get recreated with every new object you create from the constructor. This is not always desirable or necessary because JavaScript knows how to look up the chain to see if a method exists at any stage, all the way up to the original object prototype, which delivers methods like has own property. See? That's going to give us another true. So next week we'll talk about how to assign methods to an object's prototype, thus meaning it only gets instantiated once no matter how many child objects you create. Hooray performance gains! In the meantime, do you want to change something after the fact? Not a problem. We can overwrite values that came from the constructor. Here's an example. There we go. JavaScript constructors and prototypes are complex, and there's a lot to learn. We'll cover a bunch more next week. See you then.